several years ago, we initiated an experiment on a site here in Champaign County that the water hemp at that site had resistance at that time to herbicides from six different classes. One type of resistance that was there was PPO resistance. And so that affects both the foliar applied and the soil applied PPO chemistries. Things like sulfentrazone, flumioxazine, those kinds of active ingredients were for many years more or less our frontline defense, so to speak, of pre-emergence herbicides for water hemp control in soybean. But the way the resistance is manifest, the length of residual gets less and less. So I went back and looked at some trials that we had done clear back in the mid-1990s, and we had things like sulfentrazone, the authority product, in that, that trial. And at either of the two rates that we looked at, we were still over 90% control of water hemp six weeks after planting. Now, of course, that was still a sensitive population. When we used the same rates on a resistant population, we're now down to roughly three weeks of residual. So thinking about that, thinking also about the fact that if there's a good thing about triazine resistance in water hemp, it's the fact that most of that resistance is metabolism based. The advantage, I guess, that we can exploit there is that while the symmetrical triazines, things like atrazine and princep, are not effective, the asymmetrical triazine, which would be the most common one would be metrifusin that we use in soybean, remains effective. And so we, we started an experiment at that location where we looked at 16 rates of a 75DF uh, metrifusin product. It was Tricor, the uh, UPL uh, cells. And we did one ounce increments. So we started at one ounce and we go all the way up to 16 ounces. And essentially what we saw for every year that we've done that experiment, once we get around that 10 ounce rate of that 75DF, we're still over 90% control at six weeks. Our PPO chemistry, of course, we would have to spray that at probably anywhere from 21 to 24 days after application. So we think there's still a lot of utility with metrifusin and soybean for control of the amaranth species, in particular water hemp, because we have widespread resistance to many of the other chemistries. And again, that length of residual gets less and less. Metrifusin is still an effective option for us. Now, we still have concerns, like we always have, about things like high pH. We don't necessarily want to use a lot of metrifusin on high pH soils. And organic matter is very important also. So we have to be cognizant of these things. But it's still an active ingredient that we think we still have a lot of utility around if we get the rates correct. We have to make sure that we get the application rates correct. And metrifusin has never been a standalone herbicide. So there's always going to be other weeds that we have to contend with to find either tank mix partners or other pre-mixes that have another effective herbicide in there for some of the other weeds that we deal with.